Martin Scorsese's The Irishman is inching closer and closer to its release on Netflix's streaming platform on November the 27th. The movie boasts an incredible cast, including Robert De Niro, Al Pacino, Joe Pesci and Harvey Keitel, and the story concerns a true-life hitman, Frank Sheeran, who worked for the mob and claimed on his deathbed to have murdered his close friend Jimmy Hoffa, the former Teamsters union leader, under the orders of the Mafia. The movie has generated a lot of excitement online, with its trailer having been viewed over 7 million times. However, there is a bit of discontentment in the air from film fans, disgruntlement about many elements of the film. For example, the fact that we had to wait so long for the film to come out, the fact that it's on Netflix and won't get a wide cinema release, the fact that no Hollywood studio picked up the project, the fact that the actors are so old now. But in my opinion, these issues, however valid, are outweighed by the positives, and in some cases, some of the less desirable issues actually became blessings in disguise. Take for example the fact that the film got made so late. It was first talked about in 2007, with Robert De Niro confirming Joe Pesci and Al Pacino were both attached to star in 2010, and a lot of pre-production work like script and casting were in concrete stages in around 2015. But Scorsese chose to make silence first before he tackled The Irishman. It took a long time, but that's just how things pan out sometimes. The perfect time to make The Irishman, in terms of the actors looking right for the part for all the backward and forward flashbacks, would probably have been somewhere from 1998 to 2004. You could get away with making Pacino look like in his 30s with some makeup and De Niro in his 80s using the same technique. But the book was only released in 2003, so that would not have been possible. And so the complaints that De Niro and Scorsese should have made this story decades ago aren't legitimate because the story wasn't available decades ago. Also, it brings up the question of the actor's ages. Let's say Scorsese was ready to go in 2010. By this time, Pesci, Pacino and De Niro look way too old to credibly play their roles. So what would Scorsese have done? He could have cast younger actors in the flashback scenes, which would mean less screen time for the big actors and in itself would not work because the age differences in the flashbacks is not huge. It's not like we're going to be seeing them as children and then as old men and then as children again. It's only a difference of a few decades, meaning the only appropriate action would be to ditch the stellar cast and go for different actors, something none of us want. The other option would be to use CGI, but I'm sure we're all in agreement that the de-aging CGI of 2010 would not hold up today. Assuming the de-aging CGI in the film does look good, then in actuality it worked out in the film's favour that it was made so late and is coming out in 2019, because it meant we get state-of-the-art special effects and more screen time for the main cast, and they play all the age roles with no need for other actors. And let's not forget, every actor that was originally circling the project, i.e. the big four, are all in the film, about 10 years later. That is quite a feat, especially seeing as though many Scorsese projects that take time to get made usually replace actors originally cast. Silence, for example, was originally going to star Daniel Day-Lewis and Benicio Del Toro, but delays meant the film lost the two and ended up with Andrew Garfield and Adam Driver. The fact that De Niro, Pacino, Pesci and Keitel were all rumoured for the project all those years ago and are actually in the final film is remarkable. They're all old as well, so there was a chance one of them could have died before they began shooting. But that never happened. And the film being on Netflix, and not in cinemas on a wide release, as disappointing as it is, is nothing compared to the advantages Netflix brings. For one, both De Niro and Scorsese have said The Irishman would not have been made without Netflix, because they were the only ones willing to cough up the cash so that Scorsese could make the film the way he wanted to make it, with the de-aging CGI. He had complete creative freedom, there was no restrictions on who he could cast, how long the shooting schedule was for, the runtime of the film, the budget, there was no studio interference, no Harvey Weinstein sniffing around like he did on Gangs of New York, it's literally every filmmaker's dream, and if the compromise of seeing the movie made in the way Scorsese wanted it to be made without his hands tied behind his back because of studio limitations is that we don't see it in cinemas, then I completely accept that. And on a personal level, I have to say, even though I did want to see this one on the big screen, 
I've never seen a Scorsese movie in cinemas, so it's not as if my experience of watching this film is going to be any different here. There are other advantages to Netflix as well, in that it could introduce Scorsese and the actors to a new generation, it will be simultaneously available to millions of people at the same time, the lack of needing a lot of cinema showings means the film can be as long as Scorsese wants, among many other things. Let's say Paramount agreed to make the film a few years ago, and it came out in cinema. We'd all be happy, right? But what if they didn't give Scorsese the budget he wanted for the CGI, so he was forced to remove scenes? And what if they put it in the contract that the film had to be under three hours? Would you still be happy, knowing he never got to tell the story to the best of his ability? I do think that in the age of reboots and remakes, where creativity in Hollywood is at an all-time low and greediness and laziness at an all-time high, that a movie like The Irishman even getting made in the first place is in itself an achievement. And then you factor in that Scorsese is the director who made it, and he didn't pass off on it and it ended up in somebody else's hands. Frankie Machine comes to mind. Pesci came out of retirement for the film despite rejecting it repeatedly. CGI work means we get more of the main cast sharing screen time. Over $160 million was given to the filmmakers, which, even during the Hollywood New Wave and adjusted for inflation, Scorsese would have never gotten even in his prime. There's just so many awesome things about this movie that we should be happy about, that ironically have come from stuff that people have been complaining about, like the wait for the film and Netflix. We are very lucky to have this film made in the way it has been. Sure, it's not in cinemas, but neither is Goodfellas, Casino, Taxi Driver, but that doesn't stop me and you from popping in the DVD or Blu-ray and enjoying them on a weekend afternoon. The Irishman is set to be released on Netflix on November the 27th. Thanks for watching.